Miss bread on keto? Not anymore. Let me show you how I make mop muffins. It's a, it's a keto bread. Uh, and uh, I'll give you a little taste, so to speak, of uh, one of my favorite uh, meat treats called biltong. And I'll explain a little bit more. Again, welcome back to Primal Inspired Keto. I'm Mark Wheeler. So today we're going to finally do a recipe, uh, kind of look at a couple of different recipes, um, and kind of a tease on something that uh, I, that I'm I'm really passionate about, something I really enjoy. Um, so today it's mop muffins, and the reason I call them mop muffins is that I started, um, you know, without bread and toast. Um, you know, if you're having um, uh, you know, a sunny egg sunny set up and, and you like the yolk, a good runny yolk, there's no place to go with it. I mean, I end up leaving a lot there and, and I missed that, uh, having something to mop up all that good stuff or you're doing steak or chicken, set the piece of steak right on a piece of bread and, and you know, eat that or, or pork or whatever you got to, to mop up the juices. So that's kind of where the mop muffin concept came from. Um, so I started doing it and uh, used the basic keto... Um, almond bread, almond flour bread recipe, and found that um, I can make them very savory, very, very tasty. So um, I'll, I'll go through what I do in a couple of different varieties for these um, and, and how incredibly easy they are. I mean, you can make, you can make them nothing flat. I usually won't even start them until I'm about ready to, uh, you know, finish dinner because it, it just takes literally a couple of minutes and they're, they're really, really good. Um, and then we're going to talk just a little bit about Beltong. So let me uh, run the video of making my mop cake. And um, yeah. Oh, and please, uh, if you can, uh, click subscribe. Uh, click the bell. Uh, there's going to be a lot of good stuff coming up. We're just getting started. And uh, I would really appreciate that. Subscribers are good. So here is the, um, the basic mop muffin. Um, you could slice it uh, in half like I do here and use it as a base for something. I've never used them as a sandwich. I would typically put them on a plate and uh, with a wad of butter and just eat it with a knife and fork along with the other stuff that I got going on. Um, this one is just uh, almond flour and some, some of my own steak seasoning. Um, this this one here is actually uh, curry and it's the same basic recipe with just adding curry. Now I've already sliced this one. Um, didn't do a very good job slicing it but but it looks like bread and it acts like bread and it tastes really good. So there, there's nothing, there's no turn off about this but make sure you get good flour. I, I did buy some bad flour at one point. Now this one here I use for my egg sunny set up. I actually make it in that um, Pyrex saucer and I'll show you how I do that and so um, here is the basic uh, the, the basics on how the bread is actually made or the, the muffins are actually made so um, in two separate bowls I take a half a cup and I'll, I'll put the uh, instructions on the um, uh, in the, the comments on this so um, a half a cup of almond flour and I'll, I'll do the nutritional uh, information on this also. Um, and then I'll put, uh, it's about a quarter teaspoon, an eighth of a teaspoon of baking powder. Um, and so I just kind of mix it together to get the clumps out. And then uh, I, you can use um, whatever steak seasoning you want or whatever seasoning you want, really. Um, I use my own steak seasoning. It's got very coarse salt, so pepper, uh, a little bit of uh, red pepper flakes, things like that. Um, so it it uh, it really complements, particularly uh, beef or pork or anything like that. If you're going to do something in, uh, you know, for chicken or something, you might want to go with something um, with a, a, a seasoning that goes good with chicken. So it, it's that easy to do. And so uh, I'm going to mix that in there. And and just loosely, there's you know, like I said, there's really nothing to it. Um, from there, you, it's one egg and about a tablespoon of heavy cream. 
You don't necessarily have to use the heavy cream. I, I find it makes it a little bit lighter, a little bit airier. If you leave off the heavy cream, it'll become very, um, uh, very dry, um, which is not a bad thing, particularly if you got something, you know, like a you know, good juicy piece of chicken or something like that, or, or juicy beef that you got sitting in there. It, once it picks up all that, uh, the, the drippings and everything in your plate, it's, it's pretty awesome. Um, or just put a big hunk of Kerrygold butter on it. I mean, that's fine too. So I whisk the two together, and then I add the egg into the flour mix. Oh, and this is the bowl that I'm, I, I, one of the bowls I'm making in. So I'll take a, a you know, paper towel with a wad of like, you know, cold bacon fat, uh, bacon drippings from, from making bacon. I save all that stuff. So I'm sorry it's off camera right there, but uh, I put a, a good coating on the inside um, and then, then lightly mix these together. Um, you, you don't want to overdo it. At least I haven't. I kind of fold it in together and, um, you know, don't overdo the mix. Um, it seems to, seems to do much better for me that way. Um, so mix, mix, mix. It's it. Uh, every almond flour that I've used thus far soaks up really, really good. Um, I have used uh, coconut flour. It, it really wasn't so good. I didn't really like the coconut flour at all. Um, it comes out real gritty. I don't know. Maybe there's better coconut flour. I, I I'll try more. But and then don't be afraid to just because it's kind of thick. Just kind of flatten it out with a fork and just dab it down. Um, it, it'll it'll expand a bit and it. Uh, you know, it'll be fine. Um, you can't really overwork it. Uh, again, if you made it loose enough by, and I'll show you a recipe here towards the end, um, where it's, it's thinner, um, it just kind of comes out excessively moist, more like a pancake. So I'm popping this in the microwave. And then um, what we'll do is I'm going to start another one and uh, kind of show a different way of uh, of, uh, of getting the, the, the different kind of, of uh, mop muffin or mop cake. Um, a little bit of clean up there. Sure, don't make a mess. Okay, two more bowls again. And the same proportion. It's a half a cup of almond flour, uh, an eighth of a teaspoon of, um, of baking powder, I've tried this with a little bit of coconut flour, and it um, it wasn't bad, but like I said, it, it's it's kind of gritty. Um, if somebody's got some input on on um, uh, you know a better coconut flour or something to look for in a coconut flour, um, and I, like I said, I did get a an almond flour that I really didn't care for. I'm using the same steak seasoning in there. Um, it's it's one of my favorites. I, I made. Actually, a whole series of, of little ones of these uh, to bring to a football game this weekend. We made uh, a kind of a keto casserole, and I made um, I made these, and these were a big hit um, because they're just really tasty. You wouldn't know that you're not eating uh, a flour product, you know, a regular wheat flour product. So, again, the same thing with the egg and a little bit of heavy cream. I wish I had some duck eggs because they, they make uh, there's more yolk to them and they're slightly larger uh, but they make a really rich um, you know rich rich mop cake um, yeah it's I prefer duck eggs I don't I'm, I'm I have to right now I'm buying them in I don't have any uh, laying ducks here at the house so in this case I'm adding just a dash a couple ounces of um, club soda or uh, you know I think that's club soda and then what that does is it um, it puts a little fizz to the uh, uh, to the the egg mixture and it tends to soften it up a little bit and uh, and make it a little uh, uh, more volume um, it, uh, you know I've, I've had them come out uh, very very cakey 
And uh, the, the last uh, keto bread I sh uh, I'm going to show you, I'll show you that how that worked with, uh, with doing that. It's another option. Instead of using them flat, you can cut them and, uh, and have like breadsticks to go with, uh, with dinner. So the same thing again. I'm going to just lightly mix it together. And then I'll divide this batch in half. So I'm using uh, smaller uh, ramekins or, or little bowls um, in this case. The, uh, by now, the, oh, no, actually this one I'm, I'm doing my, uh, the, I'm doing the ones that I use for, um, uh, for making my eggs. So uh, put the, the baking fat that's on, you know, that I scoop up on a paper towel, just coat in the plate with that. Sorry, I'm doing that off camera. And then I'll divide this batch in half, and it's the same sort of thing where I'm going to take it and uh, not be afraid to spread it around uh, with a fork. So I'm just going to divide it in half, approximately, and put half of it right in the middle of the plate as best I can. And the other half in the other plate. And then um, uh, just kind of spread it with the fork and get it in somewhat flat, not too thin. Um, you know, this is one of those things you're going to decide how you're going to do that. Oh, by the way, when I do put them in the microwave, these, if I was going to put them both in at the same time, I'd put it in for, and every microwave's a little different, so I'd put it probably in for a minute and, you know, a mi minute and a half each, uh, maybe two, two and a half minutes if I put them both in the same time. In this case, I'm not going to do that. So. My other one that I just put in the microwave is done, and uh, uh, if the audio was on this video here, you would hear the beeping of the microwave saying, get me out of the microwave. So, um, so you just make it, uh, make it flat, fill the bottom of the plate uh, as much as you want to do. You can make them larger if you wanted. So I'm popping this one in the microwave, and I'm grabbing the, the, uh, the other one out. Um, it's had a minute to cool off, which is kind of nice because they can get pretty hot. So that's the one I just made, and uh, it's just that fast. Um, I'm going to slice this one in half. Do a better job slicing this one. And no, I, I know I'm cutting towards my fingers, but I'm fine. Um, trust me. Um, so yeah, you can see it's steamy, and uh, put some Kerrygold butter on that, and whew, that's living right there, brother. So um, set that aside, and... little housekeeping. I'll get that other one in and take the other one out. Oh, the cleavers sitting there. That, those are the cleavers that I make. Uh, I'll have them online shortly um, and I'll show you kind of what I use them for. I, I, it, it's my one of my favorite kitchen knives. Um, you know, for uh, chopping seasonings and and cutting some meat and things, it, it's it's cool. It does a lot of pretty cool things um, because of the way it's shaped. It's it's uh, more of a universal knife than just a cleaver, uh, something to hack at. I also make a heavy duty cleaver, good for uh, you know uh, deboning and things like that. Um, but that one there, it's uh, it's. Uh, 18 gauge steel. Um, it's 18 gauge stainless with a brush finish, and that particular one, uh, the ones I'm making right now, have rosewood handles, um, and then brass that's brass pinned and, and hand finished. Um, there, it's, it's my design, and I have them made. Uh, so here, here we go with the uh, with the cake that I use for eggs. Now that's great on a plate. Put a, a few. Um, sunny side up eggs and uh, that is really really good you can see it's kind of flexible and um, it does a great job of, uh, of adding you know making making uh, you know the, the eggs just super tasty because it's with that steak seasoning in there it has a really nice taste so a little more housekeeping this is my favorite thing this is Beltong um, it's a, it's a South African dried beef. Um, this is where the cleaver comes in handy because you push in the beginning and then just rock it back. You, it's, now this is 
This has been dried several days. Um, this is a perfect consistency. There's a little bit of uh, marbling in the middle of it. Um, I'll lift up a piece, I'll show you. And, oh, I can't help myself. Uh, now, this is, uh, if, so I'll have to ad lib or, or uh, um, put in the um, num 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 num, that's good stuff. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's not jerky. It'd be like, um, you know, sure it's a dried beef, but you know, look, see how translucent and, and uh, oh, it's, it's, it's a little bit salty. And um, this is a uh, coriander beef. So it's, uh, uh, it's, it's um, uh, brined in a little bit of malt vinegar and uh, Worcestershire sauce. Um, it, it's just so good so different um it's it's so easy to make you don't even need a dehydrator uh, so it's it, and it, you, you make a couple of weeks worth at a time and now it doesn't keep as long because it doesn't have all those preserves in it but preservatives in it but uh it doesn't have preservatives in it so uh it's only natural stuff between the vinegar and the salt coriander pepper some other seasonings that is really good stuff that's why i give it thumbs up Okay, I wanted to make one more mop cake and kind of show something, uh, time for another piece of biltong, coriander beef. It's biltong. Some people like to say it sounds like boltong, but it's not. It's beef. It's, you know, just regular beef. Um, uh, I think I use an eye round for, for what I make it out of. So again, with the two bowls, uh, the same basic mixture. Uh, back to the biltong. Um, I cut it in a bias. Um, you can you can do it in thin strips and cut it up that way, but but there's just something to say for the slow dry of of using the biltong in in this configuration. Um, it, it like I said it takes a few days, but if you take a couple pound piece of meat, you end up having you know a week's worth, and then you could just cycle in another batch, and you always have some. Um, uh, I've been able to uh, bag it and freeze it and uh, defrost it when I need it. seems to come out pretty decent. Um, nothing bad about that. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, like I said, you make it yourself. You know what goes into it. You know what comes out of it. And, uh, you know, you can't do wrong. I've tried some some prepackaged biltong. Um, it, it's just not the same. It's not, it's not as good. And, and part of the reason that, that I discovered in that case why it's not so good is that, oh, some more num num num, that's good stuff. Um, part of the reason why that is, um, uh, it's just not the same, is because to be able to sell it uh, to, in the United States, to be able to manufacture it, oh, more built on num num num. Um, to be able to manufacture it, you have to either have the water activity, the moisture content, so low that it's completely dry and emaciated, um, emaciated, or you have to add preservatives, and uh, I'm just not. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to. I'm not going to put that stuff in in what I'm making. Uh, so again, the same same recipe, the same proportions uh, of what we're going to do here. Um, this one is different in that I um, I add more of the club soda, and I'll show you kind of what it does to the bread at this point. Um, so again, back to the biltong. Um, I'll be doing, uh, when I get the, the, the mixes and everything worked out, uh, I'll be doing some, some, uh, videos, uh, probably a two or three part series on, on making biltong and, um, and some other dried, uh, uh, meat, uh, beef. Um, there's a, there's another South African, uh, uh dried product that's a uh, dried stick actually that's that's called uh, dravos and that's that's really good um, I'll be doing also a couple of uh, part uh, video on um, barvos which is the uh, South African sausage that's coriander and uh, um, it's just it's really really good sausage um, it you know it's it's not like anything you typically have ever had before so now, I've added the club soda in it. I've mixed it up just gently. Um, I'm also going to let it sit for a couple of minutes and, and uh, kind of, uh, and I wouldn't necessarily say rest, but I, I don't put it right in the, the microwave right away. Uh, it's just, you know, like a quarter of an inch of, of um, 
of dough at the bottom of the, the dish, uh, but by letting it sit and by adding the club soda, I get a much fluffier product. Um, and it's just it's just a different presentation. Okay, more, more bell tongue. Nom, nom, nom. That's good stuff. Um, so I'm going to put this in the microwave. Taste. Um, so here we are, at, right out of the microwave. It's hot. It only took two minutes in the microwave. Microwave. Um, and then this one, it's a, it's a thicker cake. And so I'm going to cut it into long strips like breadsticks. And it's firm enough um, that you really have no problem doing that. And it's great to just have on the plate. And, and uh, if you took something like this and, and um, uh, put them on a tray, sprinkled some cheese on them, or hot like this, sprinkle a little uh, grated cheese on there, uh, a little, uh, uh, little garlic uh, with the butter. So here's some Kerry Gold on them. And um, it's, it's, it's hot, so it's, uh, it's just settling right in. It, uh, it uh, was hard not to keep eating this because <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's just, it's just really good stuff. Uh, I, I, I highly recommend, um, you know, even if you're not one of these people that says, you know, I can't do that because I can't live without bread. Well, yeah, you can. You'll be fine. It, but but this is this is more utilitarian. That it's it's um, you, you know something that that you can use to to mop up the juices and and have. So um, here's the different uh, versions that I've done. So there's the the one that's done on the plate. Uh, there's that uh, the one that I cut in half out of the large ramekin. Um, Here's a piece of the one that's got the curry. You can see it's yellow. And that was just a half teaspoon of curry. And um, so, yeah, there's my, uh, there's my bread and my belt on. So, uh, again, please, uh, please consider subscribing. Um, check out my other videos. And um, remember, stop eating factory food. Do yourself a favor, and you'll be happier. So... Be healthy and uh, subscribe and keep checking in and um, we'll continue this journey. Thank you.